Oh, my All goodness. Right. Hello, Bishop. Mm-hmm. Hi, how are you, sir? My goodness. Your shirt you? is fantastic, by the way. Oh, thank you. I love that. I is that that's a new design, I'm sure. <laughs> it is. It. It's called uh, it's called uh, matching in with the green screen. And uh, welcome to the Greens the Bishop show here with you on a very special night, Friday night, and a very special time, a little earlier uh, than what we normally are <clears throat> on any given night. That's because we have a very uh, important interview tonight, very special interview. We yeah. have uh, Kane Hodder, of course, from Friday the 13th fame. Hatchet. Hatchet fame. Hatchet. Hatchet. Um, yeah, this guy is probably, uh, as far as character actors go, um, and, you know, just really uh, knocking it out of the park, Kane Hodder is probably top of the list. I mean, his work as Jason Parr, no one, no one is, you know, at the level he is with that. That's... After him, there were, they couldn't be anybody else. It was almost like trying to figure out who else was going to be, uh, you know, Freddy Krueger. You know, his work with that is fantastic. He also wrote a book. He's been a stuntman for many, many years, an actor. Um, he even in his book, he talked about an accident he had, which I'm going to see if he wants to touch on that for me, because I do have a few questions about that. Uh, I want to talk about the uh, what's going to go on with the uh, Jason franchise from here on out. Who keeps freezing? You keep freezing. Um <laughs> but yeah, so we're gonna have him on and uh you know chit chat, see what he's got to say, see what's going on with him right now, uh, see what his future projects are, and you know, just reminisce about some of the stuff he's done. Also, I want to talk to him about the video game because he did all the motion uh acting for the video game, the Friday the 13th game that came out. Well, definitely, like you said, you know, character acting and everything like that. Um <clears throat> it's uh his 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 Stance, his walk, his gait, if you will, is legendary. Look at this guy. His gait is yes. legendary. So, mm-hmm. you know, if you just had some putts like me and you in there pretending oh. to be Jason, it would be it would it would look like a, a bastardized child uh, between Jason and whoever else, you know. And he's a huge guy. I mean, not just tall, but he's built like they say a, a brick shit house. He is is that an know, official quote? That is an official quote from his book. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's, you know, somebody when you see him automatically, you, you you know who he is. He's menacing no matter what part he's playing. He's, he's always menacing. So it's not surprising that he does uh, good work, as they say in the business. Uh, Bishop, look at that. Thank Comments you. on your shirt. See, your shirt is uh, an award winning shirt tonight. I've already commented on it. People in the chat are excited about it. Uh, everyone, by the way, if you're watching us anywhere other than YouTube, feel free to go to YouTube and check us out over there. Um, you can join us in chat if you have a question, a comment, or you just want to say, you know what, you guys suck, uh, and I'm in England. Those kinds do, of things do are they appreciated. Have to England to say that, or they can just lie. <sighs> well, I prefer them to tell the truth, but lie to me if you need to, if it makes you feel better about yourself. But uh, and also, if you're watching us now for the first time, make sure you go to YouTube and check out our back catalog of shows. We don't only do uh, interviews with amazing celebrities and legends like King Hotter. We also do a podcast each and every week. You can check it out live Wednesday nights. But don't worry if you don't catch it live, you can watch it right there over on the YouTube. And also you can find the audio versions of anything we do right here on this channel on all the major uh, podcast platforms. So make sure you check that out as well. Uh, and you know what? I would love for our Twitch channel to really take off. So if you're a Twitcher, um, not a tweaker, go on over there and, uh, you know, subscribe over there on Twitch. Yeah. I might jump back on there some other time and play video games while recording my TV screen. So people can say, is this guy doing that? You know, everyone's upset about that, but listen, I'm thinking outside the box. I'm not doing the thing that everyone else is doing, you know, you did. I mean, I thought it was revolutionary that you, you really took people back (laughs) to the old days of where you could, uh, basically, um, like put a video camera in front of your television and be like, Look at me. I'm recording TV shows. So, uh, yeah, Bishop was is a world-class Mario Kart player, in case people didn't know. Uh, yes. uh, if you want to check that out, that's also on our uh, Facebook. Not Facebook. YouTube channel. That's probably on Facebook, too, by the way. Um, something that you also might be interested in, we did an interview with Bill Mosley, 
uh, horror icon as well. On, Earlier this week. Yeah, it was what, Tuesday night, Monday night, yeah. something like that. Uh, fantastic guy. Wow. What an interview. What a nice guy. Um, someone that uh, if you don't know a lot about him, he really digs deep into his background before getting into uh, film. So like uh, not Mikey, digging with, deep. with that being said, uh, I enjoyed watching Bill Mosley's safety or how to videos with uh, Kane Hodder. And speaking of Kane Hodder, we got him on the line. Kane Hodder, everyone. Oh, my God. Look at this guy. How are you doing, guys? How is it going, Kane? You doing all right, brother? Yeah, sorry about the background. It's not real attractive. But <laughs> no, I like it. Look at it. It's, it's real. <laughs> it's gritty. You don't know what's going to happen, and it kind of keeps you in suspense. You just <laughs> never know what might happen in Kane Hodder's garage. That's um, true. And man, what has already happened. Already happened. Uh, now, I was sitting here, and we were talking about how you have a legendary, uh, as Bishop said, gate. Uh, you have a legendary walk. Uh, the way you hold yourself is uh, is unlike anyone else. And uh, how did this come about? Is this something you perfected? Did you have a uh, when you were going to play Jason? You're like, this is the way I want to walk. Uh, actually, what I found worked the best whenever I was uh, contemplating a scene is what felt natural. And if I if I tried too hard, then it didn't look natural. And then it looked like I was acting and then it takes you out of everything. So I just tried to just do what I thought felt good. Right. And, you know, it sounds simple, but it really ended up being the best thing for me. Yeah. And see, as a, as a fan of the Friday 13th movies, once you became Jason, there was no one else that could play Jason to me because it was just, Something about it. I mean, the the way you would move and just everything made you feel like that character was authentic. It was something to fear and that it was something otherworldly that you could just not defeat. And that's how it came across. So, you know, to me, if they make any more, they need you. They got to make oh, they got to bring you back, man. You I mean, know how much I would like to do one more film as the character. Right. I mean, it would be the 13th movie. Yeah. The only person to play the character in more than one. Bring me back. I can still. Do I have to watch my language here? No, no absolutely no not. I can still kill motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't help it. me, Bishop. I mean, <laughs> it, and it's like, you know, a no brainer. It's almost like when they sit around and they talk about how they, they want to do, you know, a new nightmare on Elm Street, but they're thinking about someone other than Robert England. I'm sorry. Since he's done it so long and he did it. You know, that's who he, it is ingrained in your mind. And when I think of Jason, I think of you. I think that's you, the character, you know. And then when I think about how, you know, I'll always think of you as Jason. And then you go and do you know, the Hatchet movies. And I'm like, wow, he's Victor Crowley now. I think of him as a whole nother character, which in that that genre of slasher, you know, the crazed killer in the woods kind of thing. The Hatchet movies. I mean, they yeah. went somewhere where I'd wish the Friday 13th movies would have went. I mean, cause they had kind of, the kills were all tamed down. My favorite kill in any Friday 13th movie is the sleeping bag against a tree. I mean, what, but, what was your favorite, favorite Kane? What was your favorite? Well, you know, the favorite Jason kill is definitely sleeping bag. Yeah. Because, you know, I always say it, but it, when you kill some, someone with something that's not a weapon. Yeah. That's pretty creative. And I loved the idea from the first moment I read the script before I was even officially cast. Beekler let me read some of the script. And from the first time I read that, I said, oh, that is going to be iconic. Whether it's me or not, it's going to be an iconic kill. And sure enough, it was. And the only kill that I've ever done that kind of beat that was the Mrs. Permatio kill in the first hatchet movie with this. Yeah. And I remember seeing it for the first time. I'm sitting on my couch with my wife. We always cut the lights out when I'm going to watch a movie like that. And I'm like, holy shit. I was like, did you see what they just did? I was like, this movie's going to be great. I mean, this yeah. is going to be my kind of movie. And, and, and it you looked, can it imagine looked like, it looked real. Yep. And you can imagine, um, the pressure 
there was to do that shot because we had one take. Right. We only had one prosthetic head. Right. Yeah. And there was a camera move, and it had to be timed perfectly. And Adam was so worried that I was going to do it too early before the camera came all the way around or something. But, you know, it it worked out great. And the thing about the hatchet movies is that, you know, I was offered a character that I could develop from the beginning. You know, Mm -hmm. when I stepped in to play Jason, six other people technically had played the character. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it wasn't like I could just do whatever I wanted and not even think about the other performances because I don't think that's wise. I thought I tried to incorporate little nuances from all the other performances, just even if it didn't read on camera, it was for my uh, satisfaction where I know that I may look different, you know, than Jason has looked before and maybe a little more uh, character things like the breathing and stuff like that, that I add, but I don't want to totally ignore the guys that came before me because that would be, you know, kind of shitty to do to them because yeah. they were they were Jason before me. So, and and I think you already know this, but it was so ironic that in 1975, I was in stunt school in Santa Monica, a place called Paul Stater's Stunt School, and one of the other students in the school was Tom Morga. Oh, yeah. And it's so ironic that we would both end up, you know, there was like eight, 10 students in the school and we would both go on to play the same character at different times. I think that's incredibly coincidental. And to to go into something like stuntman school, as you were saying, to to become a stuntman, that has to be one, one of the toughest jobs in the world. And two, you got to have balls of steel to do some of the stuff you guys do. I mean, let's face it. There's people who have, have, who have died doing these stunts. There are people who have injured themselves permanently. This is, it's no child's play. It's the real thing. And you guys are out there risking it. Did you ever consider, I know after you had your accident and everything, did you ever say, you know what? I got to get out of this. I got to quit. This isn't for me. Uh, maybe I made a mistake. Maybe nope. I want to be an accountant. You, you would think I must have had those thoughts, but honestly, yeah. I never did. I thought, you know, I just learned a big lesson uh, and it didn't kill me. It right. may have scarred me permanently, but let me remember that lesson and not get too ahead of myself because that's what I did. I thought I knew more than I actually did at the time. And, right. you know, you, you do some crazy, amazing stunts early in a career and you walk away unscathed from that. It, it kind of works on your head thinking that, hmm, I think I'm, I don't think I can be hurt, you know. Right. So you have to be very aware to not get carried away with that way of thinking. And I just even even when I was in the hospital with the burns, my parents thought, well, I guess this will be the end of his idea about being a Hollywood stuntman. And, and you know, it, it never really it never occurred to me at all. It just was a. Uh, a setback and you know i would just continue when i could so how, how long did that uh take you to rehab and get back to normal uh well i was in the hospital for five and a half months oh my gosh straight wow. that's not in and out that's right, one right. day and then you know when i got out i could barely do anything for myself because of the limitations with the scars sure um so it took me another six months Mm-hmm. before I could get back to any kind of stunt work. And, you know, the ironic thing is the, the only thing I had done professionally in my career before I got burned was an episode of the TV show Emergency. Okay. And that, that was six months before I got burned. Mm. And ironically, <laughs> I, was, I played a workman that had been burned. Oh, no. Yeah, and uh, that was the only real thing. I had done a lot of live stunt shows and stuff, but that was the only real professional thing I had done. And then for, you know, the next 
year and a half after I was out of the hospital, I had to wear something called Jobst, which is tight fitting um, garment that you wear to keep pressure on the scars while the scar tissue matures. Okay. If you don't keep constant pressure on the scars while it matures, it'll get really bumpy. And if okay. you do keep constant pressure, it'll keep it much smoother so that the scars are less noticeable because, okay. you know, that's part of the, the rehab you go through is like, Oh wow, I'm 22. And now I'm going to have these scars for the rest of my life that everybody's always going to see. So you try to do what you can to limit it. And if you ever see an episode, the first thing I did when I finally got back after the burn injury was an episode of uh, Wonder Woman. Okay. Yeah. And I, if you ever watch the episode, you can see me. It, it's odd because it takes place at like a sci-fi convention, the episode. And I'm a patron. Well, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, not, how many of those do I do? <laughs> but you can see that I'm wearing that garment okay. uh, on the on the episode. So it's kind of like yeah, kind of a nice uh, reminder of when things were getting better. Do you think it may have driven you just a little harder at that point? Like it where it would break some people. Maybe it went the other way with you and it, it made you more resolute to try and, you know, prove that this was for you and that this was w what you should be doing. I think that's a great way to put it because, you know, my family, my friends, as I said, were like, oh, I guess this will be the end of his idea. So considering I didn't feel that way at all it was much more of that. Wait a minute. I'm going to show you. Mm -hmm. that I didn't fucking make a mistake. No, I, mean, I made a, an error, but I didn't make a mistake on my career path. And, uh, I want, I wanted to show everyone. And unfortunately my dad died before I could get to that point. Right. So he, That's... he never really saw me do anything. Uh, cause, uh, you know, I, once I finally got back to, uh, work and trying to work a little bit, he like died within a year and a half. Mm. So I hadn't really done anything. And that, that, that'll always bother me yeah. for the rest of my life that I couldn't show him. See, I told you. I was him. right. I was right after all. I was right. But my mom, oh my God, she, she fucking loved it. Man. I got her. That's great. And, <laughs> oh, not just the stunt stuff. She loved the fact that I played Jason, and she we we had crew jackets from Part Seven, big mm -hmm. hockey mask on the back. Sometimes I wear it to conventions. Mine, Friday the Thirteenth, Part Seven, the New Blood up here, and over here on hers it said Jason's mom. Oh, man. <laughs> she would wear that. Don't, don't get no better than that. 90 huh. degrees out and she'd be wearing the fucking thing. She Just loved so people would say, what does that mean? And, oh, let me tell you. <laughs> she loved that. She loved you. And she loved that. I mean, yeah, that, that was, she that was, was really great. proud. I mean, as, as a parent, I, that, tell, that screams pride. Yeah. And, and that's something that we all, we all work for. I mean, we all want to make our parents proud. We all want to do that kind of thing. Um, something I had read, I don't know if it's true. You tell me it's bullshit. If it is uh -oh. um, that you, were slated you were, let's say i don't want to say slated but you were uh, up for the role of the original freddy krueger for nightmare on elm street is that true well you know kind of okay the, the story i've told is that i had done a movie called the hills have eyes too mm -hmm. that's where i met barryman that's where i met wes craven and he on the set of that movie he uh, was telling me about this uh, character he was developing that's going to have real burn scars. And he said, uh, I'm thinking about using an actor that really has burn scars. And I thought, sure, I'd do that. You know, I'd, I'd do that in a second. I got the scars. I don't mind using them because right. I've done it many times in, in, since then where, you know, it, it just adds to a character, kind of scary looking, the scars. And so he said, yeah, this, I think I'm going to call this character Fred Krueger and he's going to have burn scars. And then, you know, 
that's the last I he talked to me about it. And obviously they went with Can you imagine though? I mean yeah. a huge hulking <laughs> right, right. Freddy no. Krueger? I mean, that'd be a whole it would be uh, it would change it. Would, it'd be so different. It would not even be remotely the same because you know, physically he'd be menacing. It wouldn't just be that he's burned and it's scary and he's walking around with claws, but physically menacing like that? That'd yeah. be ridiculous. But, I mean, that would be unbelievable. That, that would have been pretty interesting. Um, but I always, I always, because I didn't play the character, I always call Freddie Jason's bitch. So, yeah, yeah. That goes over well with Robert, you can imagine. <laughs> you should be like, hey, the, the guy from V is uh, playing a guy with knives on his hand. You better That's watch out. Guy. Ooh, we're really scared of him. Watch and out. What, what shot did I do as Freddie, though? Oh, that's the claw coming out of the hand for Jason Goes to Hell. That's right. Yeah. And, and look how great you did. I mean, I watched that part, I bet, 50 times the first time I got it on video cassette. I was like, look at that. King Hotter pulling down the mask. Iconic. I mean, yeah. and, and that's the way it should have been. I, mean, I remember talking, you know, when I first read it, I said immediately to myself when I first read the script, that's going to be my hand. I don't give a fuck what anyone else says including the director who wanted to do it. I said, nope, that is going to be my hand in the Freddy glove. And it was built by um, the guy that built Robert's gloves. So it was very accurate. And uh, I ended up keeping the gloves. I was so. going to say, did you steal that off the set? Because I was thinking right away, I was like, you had to keep that. Come on. You had oh, to I, I did. That. And they came around looking for it. And I said, I don't know. I just left it right here. <laughs> You should have kept an eye on it. And meanwhile, it's at my house. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's the thing, like, because I know with uh, I'd heard a rumor with Jason goes to hell. There was supposed to be a scene where I guess Freddie was down in hell and he had pulled Jason down and they wanted to do a whole lot more with it, which, you know, I know that happens a lot where they decide, hey, we're going to do all this in this film. And then they find out X, Y, Z and it didn't happen. Just like with Jason takes Manhattan. They, you know, it's in Manhattan five minutes. Right. So, you know it was still a good movie, but it was one of those movies when I watched it again the other night, I was like, I realized something for the first time. I told my wife, I said, why in the world are 20 kids going to Manhattan in what looks like an old oil tanker? Right, why yes. They have got a better boat. The, the gas alone for this would have been astronomical <laughs> just to get them there. That makes That's no right. sense whatsoever. But I That's mean, it'd right. been hard for them to hide in a pontoon boat. I mean, well, Let's face I'm it. just glad we did go to New York for one day at least. Yeah. You know, something. I mean, I was so excited to go there. And then when I found out it was only going to be one night at the end of principal photography, I was bummed. But I said, at least it's we're still going. though. You know, and as, as you already know, that was the single most amazing night of shooting I've ever had on a film was being in New York City in Times Square in the full costume. Yeah, when they do that pan around when he's standing in Times Square when it was still Times Square. Right. It's it's amazing. It's like, wow, this could have been a whole different movie. Oh my god, right. if he'd have got loose, he got loose in Manhattan and got down in the sewers and they couldn't find him. I mean, my god, he would have been just wreaking havoc everywhere. He You remember how he can go really fast from point A to point B? He goes through the sewers, pops up, boom. He's wherever he wants to be. He memorizes. I mean, he could have went a whole other direction, but <laughs> I digress. I digress. Uh, but, I, I wanted to say something about Jason Goes to Hell, too. You reminded me of, you know, I was always a little concerned about the fact that, for however you want to explain it, the evil of Jason goes into other people. Right. And... So it's going to be Jason, but it's going to look like somebody else. Mm -hmm. And I thought, and I still am amazed that uh, nobody thought this was a good idea besides myself. But I thought I would talk to all of the actors that are going to have the evil of Jason within them and see if we can come up with a little trademark move that I do mm -hmm. when I'm Jason that they could do, which would make the viewer think, oh, God, that still looks like Jason that I know because he did this. Yeah. And I thought it would be just a very cool, as a viewer, I think I would like that. And to every, 
possible extent, none of the other actors thought that was a good idea. It's the so only thing that made sense, though. I mean, because yeah. if you watch some of the stuff, you're like, okay, he's moving like that. But there was some that were just like awful. I'm not, I'm not trying to run down any of the actors, but they, yeah. their portrayal of the way they moved and stuff is like, this isn't real. You know, this isn't how he would move. Because if you want to think about Jason, go back to part seven where his mask splits open and he's, he's just, right. you know, the breathing, the breathing. I mean, it was genius, yeah. the stuff you did like that. And that's the things that they needed to pick up on to that's carry right. it on through. You're just right. You're 100% right. right. Just to, I mean, so you could see some consistency, yeah. you know, in in the performance. Well, he looks different, but he still does this. Mm -hmm. you know, but just uh, nobody was interested. So my Jason <laughs> wouldn't do that. That's that's. <laughs> That's the response I, was, I got. I was, gonna, from I was gonna say, what did they say? Like, yeah, no, I'm not gonna do yeah, that. Yeah, my Jason wouldn't do that. Yeah, your Jason, you <laughs> motherfucker. I mean, this might be a, a, a weird thing to say, but I loved Jason X. I loved it. Uber uh, Jason, you know, I yeah. that was such they went in such a different direction. It was something, you know. Where they should, the execution was there that they missed out on Jason Takes Manhattan. The execution was there. You know, you, he was in space. Uh, everything's set in the future. And even the stuff with like, they did the hologram. Genius. Uh, that's perfect. That was all vintage Jason throwing people around and just, you know, raising right. hell. And, and we, 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 you know, in the previous films, we had no more than eight weeks of shooting. And Jason X, we had 12. So a lot bigger budget, a lot more time to invest into certain things like that. The frozen head kill is classic. Uh, and all the versions of Jason that I've been, which technically are five because of original Jason and then Uber Jason in mm -hmm. Jason X, these, the, by far, the one that bothered people the most to look at me to, at my face was uh, Uber Jason. Those eyes. Yeah, the eyes were so crazy looking. And if I would just stare at people, they were very uncomfortable. You know, and this is considering the makeup in part seven, which is oh. pretty scary looking. Part but seven, Jason, my favorite, absolute favorite. Oh, mine too. But just because of the look and the fact that I had so many good stunts to do as Jason. Um, how, but, how long did, uh, you know, makeup, uh, I, I know, like you said, you look changed in all the movies, but normally how much, how long does makeup take for, you know, to, to get as Jason? Uh, part seven was the longest makeup process because it was pieces glued on, you know, it wasn't just a mask. Mm -hmm. Um, and it took three and a half hours. Cool every day before you start shooting. So I was ready to tear shit up by the time I got to the set every day. <laughs> oh yeah, you were hot <laughs> under the collar, as they say, you were yeah. ready to go. And, and you know, the Jason Goes to Hell one was very difficult to work in. Very, I don't know why, but it was way more hot and uncomfortable than any of the other ones. So hmm. it was, you know, kind of it was something to do with the head. The head was different. They almost gave him a larger head in a yeah. way. So I mm -hmm. could see where that would be, you know, change the way you moved and moved your head and that right. would be and hotter. The biggest thing I think was that in all of the other movies, at one point, even part seven, in between shots, I could take the hockey mask off. Now I still had makeup on my face, but taking the hockey mask off, I could breathe a little better. Jason, uh, Jason, I mean, uh, yeah, Jason goes to hell. It was built into the mm -hmm. head, so it couldn't just be removed whenever I wanted it to. We could take it off for lunch, but it was a process. Uh, so, you know, you get out of breath and you try to catch your breath with something over your face like that. Not easy. Right. Now, I, I was very excited because I am a huge fan of yours, and I saw you were doing the motion capture stuff for the video game that came out. And I tell you what, I spent more time watching the behind-the-scenes videos of you <laughs> doing those than I spent playing the game. I mean, 
the stuff that just to watch the the technique and the way you moved and you know you put in your all into every single one of those you know things they had the, you doing and it was right. disappointing that the game didn't do better than it should have it, it really should have i mean they they had a great premise it was the execution where they they kind of messed up on but yeah. the the idea the whole, you know i i felt honored that gun media their their only thought was it has to be Kane doing the motion yeah. capture, and I was like, well, you know, it doesn't really. I mean, let's face it, it's not a movie. It's going to be motion capture. It could be anyone, but I love the fact that they think it should be me. It took almost two years for that motion capture from sure. start to finish, a year and ten months, and you know, not all solid, but right. off and on. And uh, it was such. A different process because first of all what I look like you already saw that mm -hmm. I guess uh, I was scary in the movies but maybe more scary wearing spandex uh, <laughs> and grunting and everything else <laughs> the and, grunting was and, my favorite part he's making yeah. all kinds of noises <laughs> hey that just helps my performance <laughs> <Yeah. But laughs> method it's, it's weird because you know you you do things typically on a film to look good from one or two or maybe three angles. Yeah. Simultaneously, whatever can wherever the camera angle is, make sure it looks good from there. Multiple cameras once in a while, but motion capture is like 75 cameras simultaneously co collecting the information from every possible angle. So it's challenging to do the stunts with the victims I brought in all the stunt people, and in fact, there every male victim in the Friday the Thirteenth game is the same stunt guy uh, named Ryan Stats. I used him for every single session. You threw him uh, all over the place. Oh, I did. I beat the shit out of him, <laughs> and he just kept getting up and let's go again. You know, so, um, but you know, it's just a different process. But I was just, uh, I loved it, and you know, there's. Something coming up too that I obviously can't talk about, but stay tuned on on that front. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, I like that the teaser. I like, I like that, that teaser. Yeah. And uh, if I told you, I'd have to kill you, which of course, which um, you could easily. I don't easily. mind killing Bishop, but right. You know, well, you're you're in the you're in the 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 garage. You got all the weapons, I'm sure, oh, right there. Right. Yeah. So you got a kill room right behind him. I mean, <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, boy, I really thought this through, didn't I? Put in that background, yeah, that's that. smart. Wow. Smart. You know, always thinking. Always <laughs> thinking. Now, something I wanted to say real quick was, I always, and I told us to Bill Mosley the other night. I always, when I go to look for a movie, because I watch at least one horror movie a night. If I'm looking for something new to watch or something I've watched before, I always look for three things. Either it has Tony Todd in it, it has Bill Mosley in it, or it has Kane Hodder in it. Because wow. it's it's always nice. you you three will always even if everyone else in the movie sucks, you guys' performances are always exactly what I'm looking for, oh, and wow. that I want to thank you for yeah. for continuing on for not letting uh, the accident slow you down and really proving to everyone that you had the goods, as they say, you had uh, what it takes. That je ne sais quoi, uh, you were able to get out there and uh, really do it up. Now, are, are we going to see any more Victor Crowley? Are we going to see wh – where are we going to see you next that you can uh, tell us about? Well, I mean, you know, I've done done some films in the past year that are have yet to come out. Uh, one that I really am happy with is called The Good Things Devils Do. And I play a character, a really fucking horrible guy, uh, once again, but I'm speaking <laughs> instead of just doing silent killing. Right. And you guys know that I never anticipated ever doing dialogue early yeah. in my career. Right. I just wanted to do stunts. That's it. I didn't want to be an actor and all that. But, you know, as I went on, I saw that I enjoyed that almost as much, if not more, eventually than you know, the physical stuff. So the fact that I have been able to do that as well, it, I feel very fortunate, but I have a, a scene in this movie 
where I'm I've got two captive females and the director left a three minute long take in the film with no <laughs> edits, no, no reaction edits from the other characters or, or anything. Three minutes long wow. of just me talking. And wow. you almost never get that opportunity right. because you have to edit and do stuff, but it works and it's fucking scary. It scares me. <laughs> and I'm the one that did it, but it, and so I'm very happy with that. And, you know, I, I just some of the roles that I've been able to uh, do in the last couple years are just something I never anticipated and I really appreciate. And that's why working with quality actors like Tony Todd and Bill Mosley, I feel privileged to right. even be in the scene with them. And if I can do anything to help the scene, because I know they're gonna, they're gonna carry it and make it powerful. If I can add to it, I'm just happy to do that. And when you work with somebody like Mosley, who loves to ad lib, which a lot of actors are not comfortable with. If you're doing a scene with an actor and they ad lib some dialogue and you have to go along with it, that can throw people. And people aren't comfortable with it. Wait, wait, that's not what you were supposed to say. Right. So it takes them out of the scene and they have to cut. But I love it with Mosley. And, you know, I, I think we talked about this somewhere in the past, the scene in the junkyard with the cop on right. Old 57, mm -hmm. where the cop says, you know, anybody else here? And it's just myself and Mosley and uh, and Bill says, nobody here but us chickens. And then we he cut and we did another take. You already know what's coming because you remember. Ahead, yeah. He we do another take and Mosley says, nobody here but us chickens. And then he looks at me, he says, show him the chicken dance, dummy. <laughs> and I'm like, what? He says, he says, show him the chicken dance. And so I had to start dancing around like a chicken. <laughs> I fucking loved it because there is no way that that can look rehearsed because I didn't know it was coming. So uh, when, when an actor is that talented and Tony does the same thing, that when they're that talented and they throw something at you, I love the challenge. And it just, it just makes it fun to work with people like that. And that's what, what I was going to say too. If I can find a movie with more than one of y'all on it, like you were just talking about, you know, it's going to be a good night. I know I'm not getting off the couch. I might even pee myself before I get up to go, but <laughs> I'm not missing anything. Bishop, what were you going to say? I would say in that scene, the the crew had to be dying laughing, right? Because you know they they know the script, and it's like just yeah. you know, they were just let them go. Like we're catching something special here. You know, I know that's because. Funny. If I remember right, there was some crew member that kind of laughed. Right. You know, if he thought it was like a prank on me or something. And he was about to laugh and, you know, the rest of the cast or the crew would laugh, but nobody else did. And we just kept shooting. And it, and so I think they had to make <laughs> They're all looking at each little other. noise out. Right. Now covering their face, not looking at each other. Something I wanted to ask, because I know you do a lot of conventions and things like that, and you meet a lot of fans, which I've heard over and over again that you're very cordial to the fans, very good to them. But every once in a while, I'm sure you get one that's a jerk or you get one that's crazy. What's the craziest thing you have seen one of your fans do? Uh, hmm, well, I mean... I don't often run into many jerks, to be honest with you, because I think that people know me well enough to know if you're really an asshole, I may smash you. Right. Because, you're intimidating. Well, no, not just that. I just that, you know, <laughs> I have a job where if I go to jail for a violent act, is that going to affect my career? Really? <laughs> right. Eh, no. Yeah, it most won't even people, be on the back page. Yeah, it'll just it'll be buried by the cartoons. Most people have to think, oh, God, I better not go to jail. So I think, that, you know, knowing that helps a little. But the the one of the craziest things was at a convention, a guy 
said, I know you're, you're not going to want to do this, but if you would please do it, I'd be forever in your debt. And I thought, oh, boy, what's coming? He says, can you just punch me in the face? <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, that's funny. Okay, good joke. He said, no, I swear I'm not kidding. I'll sign a release. I just want to say that I was punched in the face by Kane Hodder. <laughs> and, oh, I, you know, I understand his passion because I could almost see that me saying that to somebody else <laughs> that I really admired. So even though I couldn't do it, I really, I did kind of understand. And <laughs> I guess that makes me sound fucked up, but... Yeah, you're, like, oh, you're, like, you're arguing with the guy like i can't do that buddy if you don't get out of here i'm gonna bust your ass he's like okay fine <laughs> yeah. he's just yeah. pushing it yeah. pushing i'm it. not gonna leave in but he That's... desperately wanted me to do it and i that was a long <laughs> time ago too well I, mean, I guess i guess it would be kind of cool to be able to say that it would be a great story for the guy yeah, yeah. you know what and happened we were... to your eye well kane hutter punched me in the face and they're like no fucking way <laughs> oh i got video yeah, of it. yeah they're like He's famous with all his friends all of a sudden. Now, if if everybody hasn't gone out already and got your book, it's been out a while. Unmask. Make sure you go get it. Or do like I did. And I bought the audio book. And oh. I put on headphones. And I sit back. And to hear you talking. And it's like I can, you know, I can see you now, of course. But it's like I can see you talking and walking. You know, I can see the things that you're saying. So if people want to. A whole new experience as far as that goes. I highly recommend the audio book. The audio book is fantastic. Yeah, I well, I appreciate that very much. And that's why that that kind of response from the book is why we did the the documentary. Mm -hmm. And that has gotten such a tremendous response from from people that didn't know so many things about my life, even even though I would talk about them in the book, somehow when you see you know on film and hear the story and have other people that tell their side of that same story and stuff it's just very yeah. compelling and i've had such a great response from from the documentary and and you know it's called to hell and back and for fairly obvious reasons mostly the burn but other stuff be besides that the the you know the emotional stuff and all that that's what yeah. people really relate to that the career stuff is fun sure but when you when you're talking and you talk about a circumstance that someone else can identify with and yeah. they think wait a minute he knows how i feel regarding so and so that's huge and i'm just really glad i did it i was i was a little concerned because i didn't know if i was supposed to have maintain this image of being a badass or whatever but you know i, I just decided i'm going to tell the story and it, it does help because a lot of people like I, i'm sure bishop has experienced i experienced it growing up bullying and things like that and you know to know that even someone is no of course not bishop you jackass um you're a badass in school i know um but it, it kind of like helps it's like you know one of those things where like you know what it's things are relatable when you can relate to someone. It, it even brings you more interest. I think, I think that that will bring in your fans and give them just that insight. And not a lot of people will do that. And I think that's to be commended as well. I think that's awesome. I that's mean, I, you know, I'm glad that people, you know, enjoy that, but if I'm going to tell my story, I'm going to tell the entire thing, good and bad. So do it. Do it your way, and that's what yeah. you've done your entire career from top to bottom. Uh, definitely, you've done it all your way. Is there anything I know we we have a limited? I've actually kept you longer than I'm supposed to, but do you have like anything that you want to get out there to let everybody go check out this, that, or the other? Do you got anything you want to shill real quick? You know, get it out there to the public. Uh, I mean, I hope people check out another film I did called uh, 13 Fanboy. And we did this last year and because of the COVID situation, I it guess it's still kind of on hold, but it's about a guy that's obsessed with the Jason character. Oh, and does terrible things. 
and I play myself in it. And I get in a fight with this guy and I'm, I have a dying scene in the film where I'm laying in the arms of an actress named Jennifer Banco. Now, if you remember that name, she was young Tina oh. in part seven when she was a little girl. Wow. And hmm. how cool is it to do That's a amazing. scene with her yeah. as an adult where I'm now dying as a result of my injuries from this fight scene. And I, since I'm playing myself, I, I did the scene as scripted. And then I asked the director, director whose name is Deborah Voorhees for real. <laughs> uh, I asked her, do you mind if we do one more take of that? And she said, of course not. And I said, you're not going to know what I'm going to say, but you'll know when to cut when I close my eyes. Because I just wanted to try something. You know, I've never been trained as an actor in any way. Uh, if, you know, I've always said if I am talented in that regard, it's because I've watched talented actors in the past while I'm doing stunts. Right. I was always very observant on the set. And uh, if I could pick up little things that they were doing, because when you're doing stunts, you're not involved in every single shot like a crew member is. So you can sit and just watch an actor or an actress prepare for a scene just by being observant. And I've done that my whole career. So anyway, the point being that uh, I started talking about, you know, really personal stuff. In fact, talked about my dad in this hmm. scene while I'm dying and uh, talked about exactly what I said before, where he didn't live long enough to see that I made the right choice and all this stuff. And I, I just ad libbed a whole bunch of stuff while I'm crying and stuff. And yeah, close my eyes, they cut and I open my eyes and look around and there's crew members crying. Mm -hmm. I mean that, I mean, pretty cool. You, you brought it from a real place. I mean, and when yeah, you bring I mean, something from a real place, people can feel that. I mean, you can feel the energy in, in a room. I mean, I'm yeah. a sympathetic crier. Somebody's crying. Something's, you know, you know, really gut wrenching. I'll yeah. do it. I'm not gonna lie. I'll be a sympathetic crier about things like that. But nothing wrong with it. Yeah, that's that's. I can't yeah. wait to see it. I mean, the premise sounds I don't amazing. Know if she will use that take, if it necessarily works, maybe it's too much for that particular scene. I don't know. But I was just very uh, grateful that she let me do that. You know, because you know a lot of actors have. I mean, directors have what they want mm -hmm. on that's that screen it. and. They don't want to hear anything else because, and I think those are directors that are uh, insecure, to be honest with mm -hmm. you. A, a secure director will give an actor a chance to do something because you never know how it might turn out. So I was very pleased. Well, our time is done. I can't believe uh, I've already kept you way longer than I was supposed to. So I want to get a pleasure. I appreciate uh, <laughs> both you guys. And yeah. I got to punch Bishop in the head next time. <laughs> Please just do. Just a light one. Right. That's right. Just a, I won't we'll knock you out. I'll just right. stun you. And, uh, and we'll, we'll, look for you. we'll look for you at the next gathering of the Juggalos. I know you might get out there and uh, stretch I do. I do stuff. enjoy that, yes. Twisted are my buddies and, you know, the Impractical Jokers are buddies now. And, you know, there's a lot of perks to doing the job that I do. I get to meet people that I'm big fans of and find out that they like my work. So, you know, it's pretty cool. Kane Hodder is living the life. That's I'm right. telling you. In my garage. In the garage. <laughs> you know, everybody's always asked me, you know what? If you ever interview Kane Hodder, ask him, can we see your garage? And that <laughs> will be. There's one phone. It's I compelling, see, I know. I see 10,000 views just from that. I mean, people, that's, <laughs> that's what I'm putting the tagline. Fresh uh, from the garage. I mean, come on. But right. Kane Hodder, thank you so much for coming yeah. on with us. Thank it's you a real guys. honor. A true legend, time. icon. You're coming on with us again soon. I'm gonna I'm gonna badger you till I get uh you on enough times that I get a picture back here for this wall behind me. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, Bad. all I can say is uh to all you guys and all the people that listen to you, 
Watch your backs. And he means it. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that guy. Woo, what an exit. This man knows how to make an exit. <laughs> wow. That's the that first time anyone has got out that that uh, quick, that pristine. Oh, man. Well, uh, yeah, Kane Hodder, everyone. Yes, Kane Hodder. What a guy. Interview. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, I, uh, I wanted him at the end of his die scene. Uh, when well, he's about to close his eyes to say, do the chicken dance dummy and then die. <laughs> but uh, that might help to take. But yeah, cool. Also, well, can thank you once again for coming on the show. Uh, check out uh, his different uh, social media platforms. Uh, KaneHotterKills.com. Is that his website, Mikey? I believe. Yes. Kane Hotter Kills. And pick up the book. Pick up his book. The book is amazing. Watch the documentary. Anything and everything you can get your hands on uh related to one king hotter i highly recommend the guy is a genius and a national treasure well mikey thank you so much for uh jumping on and uh knocking no, out that great you know, interview this, this was my interview i know I but i'm saying i know Come but on. thank you for setting it up and doing all that sure. so. <sighs> second name uh, I'll, I'll get you on the next one man okay there you go all right all right all right, well, uh, as in the words of Kane Hodder, watch your back. Oh, oh, I didn't do it as quick. Ah. No